Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Last video, we explored the creative and powerful uses of the Light Bearer and discovered many wonderful uses at bossing and even skilling. Today's video, alongside our normal progress, we will explore the complex uses of the Osmontan's Fang. If you are excited to learn about the uses of the Armor Piercing Fang, then slap that like button and also subscribe so you don't miss out on the Shadow Showcase coming out next. Probably the most exciting one yet. As usual, let's quickly cover Iron Bar's progress up to now. We are mainly focused on completing the 7 major drops at Tombs. We only have the Missouri Top left. Overall, my long term goal is filling all the PVM related collection log slots. The side content as of late is Barrow's a Nightmare. Toe flags, oh my god. Okay, let's see. How many, uh, dude, I must have so many toe flags at this point. I've never seen my bag with this many toe flags in my life. Holy, oh, I got another yellow gem. Huh. Holy shit, 34 minutes. Oh my god. That'll totally make up for today. Holy shit, 34 minutes. That's awesome. Hell yeah, we're, we're gaming right now. I'm gonna just buy a few because I want to just have placeholders and also save some bank space too so hell yeah so i'm trying to save some bank space and i realize i have like five physicists in my bank why not just turn them on to dfs's right it's not like i can turn them to anything else all right we are fully charged all five dfs's and i have an extra one in my bank so wait what they don't stack I got scammed then. They don't even stack, guys. All that for nothing, dude. Casket? Oh, look at that, boys. 600th slot, finally. Yeah, we're gonna definitely work on more clues down now that we're starting to uh, actually expand our PVM collection log grind. We have a lot of hard slots that we have to refill. God, I think I've gotten at least half of all these items in the past. Because we have 400 hard clues. Oh, thank goodness the Black Dragon Mask is in there. <laughs> Quick look at the Cavalier before I put it inside. Let me just see how many hard clues stuff I have in there. As you can see, yeah, I have filled a lot of these. So now that I'm back to doing more clue scrolls actively for collection lock purposes, it's been pretty fun. It's time for me to settle my score with this newer elite step that requires to get a farmer's hats from Thai farm i already dropped one of these but yeah it's time to get it done i heard it was actually pretty quick like an hour or so that's ambitious nice we did it in one try 100 of these apparently i get 26 points i do sweet okay i just gotta do 100 more correctly and the hat is mine so all right this elite clue will be completed in 20 more minutes Damn, we didn't mess up a single time. Feels freaking good, man. I came, I conquered, I showed off my ancestral farming skills from my, uh, you know, lifelong genetics of being a rice farmer. There we go. There it is, the last 100. Sweet. Thank God it's 26 points and not 25, because I started with 24. So that gave me just a little bit over what I need. All right, so it is the hats that I need. Yes, for the clue. And also, it's a collection log. I'm not really focusing much on mini game stuff, though, but it's a free slot, though. A slot's a slot. Casual ancestral set. No big deal. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's the bottom. I only have one of these. There we go. Yes. Yeah, damn, that's crazy though. 22 barrels runs an hour, actually. Now that I've gotten pretty decent at the rhythm, yeah. Oh, double barrels? Are you kidding me? No way. That's the second one so far working on the log here. Wow, but they're all dupes. Sad. Oh, Dark Scray Axe? Yes, let's go. Unique item. Hell yeah. All right, that means we are up to down to six left yep oh first home hey let's go two uniques already boys so freaking fast god damn boys 
that's inc that's crazy i've gained um five unique slots today wait what i've gained five wait was i was i at 599 starting today holy shit five items left oh i still killed it dude i accidentally left so early and i still killed it that's so funny oh finally a blood shard damn it's been a while i'm at 20,000 kills and i've got my 12th one so i'm like actually too behind but let's go stocking up stocking up so the fang has had quite the controversy as of late because although it's pitched as a niche item that would only be best in slot in a few places like next or corp it came out rather way more busted jagex says it was a bug but it looks like to me they just didn't quite understand their own coding with the fang and how it interacted with combat Basically, what happened is that the Fang rolled twice per hit, and in that rolling twice per hit, it counted both accuracy rolls twice and defense rolls twice. And I don't know exactly how the overall mathematics works out, but according to Jagex, that set of interactions made the weapon a lot more accurate than it was supposed to be. As a result, the Fang ended up outclassing the Dragon Hunter Lance at a lot of different dragons. And that's crazy because it almost put the Dragon Hunter Lance almost out of a job. And it also outclassed things like a bludgeon at things like Nightmare. So Nightmare is super resistant to slash and stab and it's weak to crush. But the Fang didn't really care. It didn't have a crush attack style. It only had slash and stab but it still was better than a bludgeon. So yeah, it was wild. So to make the Fang more intended to how Jax wanted it, they got rid of that extra defense roll. So now... The fang is a lot more balanced and unfortunately i did a lot of testing before i got nerfed but do not worry i still got you guys covered on the updated uses in this video i had to do a lot of number crunching to really figure everything out again so let's talk about the good news of the fang post nerf it is still best in slot at a few core places including a dragon boss oh my god the first and most important place is definitely at the tombs of a musket the fang did not change at all so it is still super strong there it still can roll exactly the two actually and two defense rolls so nothing's going to come close to being the fang at the tombs of musket because all the melee bosses are weak to stab but does have an abnormally high defensive rating so the fang's perfect for that it's going to be the star of the show still the fang is very accurate slab and slash base weapon that is good against monsters of high base defense but with a low resistance to stab and slash so going forward in the future, any monster that essentially has high defense but does have a noticeably lower stab or slash defense, the Fang will most likely be the king. The Fang is still amazing at Corporal Beast if you are soloing. I did cover this already in a previous video, but I'll talk about it again. So I've done the math comparisons between a Zemrak and Spear and the Fang at Corporal Beast. So the fastest way to solo Corp Beast is just Suicide Method which involves a lot less special attacks than the typical AFK method with the Sea Spear. As you can see, if you do not spec corp, the Fang is massively better than the Spear, but I found out that landing two hammer specs is still worth it at corp because the Fang gets significantly stronger, but it still easily outclasses the Sammy Spear. So it's worth doing at least that much each kill. So you essentially will save a lot of time not specking out the boss using the Fang method thus getting you more kills an hour. So the Fang is still the king here for soul methods. I've been able to get up to 9 kills an hour using the Fang suicide method versus the traditional 5 to 6 an hour AFK method with the spear. Oh, that was a really good kill. Holy crap. I killed that core in uh, like 3 minutes and 40 seconds? 50 seconds? That was super fast. Goddamn. Yo, collection log item. Let's go. <laughs> Holy, I almost lost that random event. So, we have finally gotten every single random event item, except for the Stale Baguette. That one, it's gonna be a tough one, man. I might never ever get it, but hey, maybe I'll be lucky to be a chosen one in the future. Oh, anyways, we hit 3,000 corp. Yeah, I did a few hundred kills with the Fang, and I have to say, it is super, super good. So unfortunately, we are over 2x try for the Spectral, and even more unfortunately is that the collection log for Corporal Beast, none of the sigils have made it. Since I've gone all of my sigils pre-log, 
So yeah, we still have a lot to fill technically, but I'll break here and wait till I get Missouri Body because when I get Missouri Body, that will be the full perfect setup for this Fang Suicide method. So I'm gonna wait till then and come back and you know do a few hundred more kills or something at a time and see if we can really pour for a sigil for the log then. I am excited though, so I'll be patient. Now we're gonna go ahead and test the Fang and also the Light Bearer at next today for like two hours. One hour of next is kind of too short. You don't get too many kills in one hour, so I think at least two hours is needed. So let's just see how nice, how much nicer things are from my experience. It's going to be purely anecdotal just because there's so many variables like from a team perspective, but I can probably compare it from like how I feel uh, as a, you know, just an individual perspective. So another key place that the Fang still dominates is at next. She is very tanky, but has a weakness to stab, so the Fang will easily surpass the previous best in slot, Gorazi Rapier, and easily out DPSs the Zarya Crossbow even more if you're doing range only next. But the overall best setup is now Fang for whenever you can melee her, the Zarya Crossbow for Shadow Phase, and Twist the Bow for minions and when next is under around 200 HP. The Fang is an absolute monstrous upgrade at next. You will easily notice the difference in how fast you can kill the boss using the Fang versus your older weapons. Holy. Wow, look at that five minute kill. Jeez, yeah. Average kills are stonks, man. Nine kills an hour with, with a pretty makeshift team right now. Let's see if we can keep it up for the, for the next hour because that's actually really freaking good. So let's talk about how Nex did in two hours. So with a team where me and one other person had basically max gear and two other people with not max gear but had the Fang, which I say it's probably a decent team, but not like obviously the sweatiest team setup that you can get in a four man. We still managed to get over eight kills an hour over two hours. So if you have a really, really good team with like the best of the best, you can probably get like even nine ten kills an hour but yeah eight kills an hour back in the day pre toa was really hard to get you had to get a really good team that basically never died during any of those hours so i was able to pull this off with just a makeshift team of people half the people i've never done next with so yeah it it's that good the fang is that good massive difference the kill times are like super fast too just like consistent five minutes sometimes even lower with just four people so Last but not least, I did mention one dragon where Fang is still the king, and it is actually at King Black Dragon. For some reason, King Black Dragon has a much higher style resistance to stab on top of its fairly high base defense that the lance mere 20% accuracy boost against dragons is not enough to overcome the Fang's defense piercing ability. The Fang is better than Lance at KBD, straight up, even without special attacks. But if you include the Fang special attack, it's even better. Not to mention, if you are sweaty, you can force the boss to hit you less often by stunning the boss to take every Fang hit. As the Fang is a 5 tick AK 3 second attack weapon and the boss typically hits every 2.4. But if you go under the boss each hit, you can stall it and take even less damage as shown in the video. Definitely notice that I take a lot less damage since I'm... Um making the boss attack me at the same speed that I attack it, so. Okay, we just finished the cheeky King Blood Dragon test, and uh, I have really not much more to say. This is about 72 kills an hour with this gear. Crazy. With this gear, not that great. The gear is not even that impressive, so it's all the fangs. 72 kills an hour, insane. To get 19 kills, I barely used any food. Now here's the unfortunate news explained. The nerf has made some places where I tested the fang, to be best in slot no longer best in slot but more like second best or third best it is not completely terrible as it is still a good alternative for these bosses i covered so the fang was doing amazing work at dragons and outperformed the lance on most of these dragons as i've mentioned but now the lance is once again the king against dragons like steel up to rune dragons and good old forecast and remember the Fang is better than the Lance, still, at King Blood Dragon. So I went ahead and did the math to show you guys the Lance versus the new Fang at pretty much all the Metal Dragons. As you can see, things like Iron Dragon, Steel Dragons, Mithril, Adamant, Rune, 
the lance is a little bit better not by too much but you can also see a pattern where things like iron dragon the lowest offensive dragon out of the lot here the lance is significantly stronger so that's the relationship the lower the defense against a dragon the stronger the lance is over the fang but the tankier dragons like the adamant dragons and stuff you can see that the difference is pretty small you might not even notice it but yeah things like kingdom of dragon where the defense is at its highest overall the fang actually starts taking over but that's pretty much only the instance of kingdom of dragon so maybe in the future if they introduce another dragon that's even tankier than kbd then perhaps the fang might have another place but all in all though if you don't have a lance and you have fang that's okay you can pretty much kill all the dragons almost the same so the fang versus lands of warcath is a pretty good topic to talk about right now so before the change the fang was virtually identical to the lance i was getting 30 kills an hour for both but after the update though the lance is definitely noticeably better after an hour you'll see that there is a difference now the fang is not completely dead content of warcraft because the fang specs are still quite nice but the fact is the fang is still incredibly accurate so it's still really good for last hit so if you're sweaty you could bring the fang as a assist weapon for special attacks or for last hit so if warcraft is 10 23 rather than using the lance for that hit you can just use the fang and it'll secure the kill probably faster on average right because it's like a 90 plus percent accuracy to hit with the fang versus like the 78 percent with the lance and that's what of course best gear but either way it'll probably proportion the same if your gear is worse than mine overall the fang is a nice assist weapon for sweaty players of orcath and also it's great second weapon of choice if you do not have a lance here it's almost the same kill time still but if you are going to use the fang as the main weapon do keep in mind that the acid run to hit the boss while dodging acid is a lot more complicated you do need to understand the ticks a bit better because you're gonna have to like walk two to four tiles before you can even hit the boss unlike the lance which is a more even and simple rhythm so as you can see in the video it is a bit of work the next boss i want to give special attention to is actually callisto I tested the Fang with a similar setup to the Vigorous Mace, and I should you not, pre-nerf Fang was probably better than the Mace, because I was averaging 2 minutes or less per kill on Slayer Tass. But now it's not even close. The Vigorous Mace is way better at Callisto than the Fang. However, the Fang is still probably second best option, uh, because it'll easily beat things like Ferax and the good old Whip. So we did 20 or so Callistos, it gave me 500 Super Combo, so I just turned into Ultras. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my, what do you call this, uh, bombless bucket so I can get a thousand charges. They'll just come in handy uh, for my next farm runs because sometimes, you know, I don't feel like turning into the Lunar Spellbook or something, so this will work fine. I can just instantly compost and not worry about it running out because it ah, sounds like a lot. Yeah, you need some uh, compost? Maybe do some Clissa. Lastly, I did test the Fang out at Chambers because it was rumored to be really good at Tecton and it's also a really strong stab weapon, naturally. So it would be good at Fossil Crystals, Range Vanguards, and just overall a really versatile weapon there. Pre-nerf, the Fang was extremely good at Chambers upon testing. It definitely rivaled Inquisitor's Mace pretty closely at Tecton and it was super versatile at Fossa and Vanguards. Like, I was having no issue killing the Crystals fast or killing the vanguards, the ranged vanguards, quick. But with this change, the fang is definitely not the ideal weapon for Tecton anymore. The mace, the Inquisitor mace, is significantly better, but the fang is still a very good second weapon at Tecton, I would say, beating even the bludgeon. Despite the nerf with the fang, the fang is still an amazing secondary item to bring, as it is very versatile, so yeah, I still recommend bringing it. But do not ditch your Inquisitor mace if you have it. So let's talk about weapon comparisons at Chambers, since there's so many different melee weapons that you can use at Chambers, and there's also different types of raids like challenge mode versus normal mode. So let's just look at the Fang versus all these other weapons in different scenarios. So we have the typical Rapier and Scythe that people would bring outside of the Lance. 
Uh, the lance is mainly just used for ohm. So if you are sweaty, you will probably bring an extra weapon. Instead of lancing tecton or like lancing the crystals, you'll probably have a side weapon, which is usually either a scythe or a mace. Or in this case, you also have a fang. So how does this work? So when it comes to vanguards for the ranger, the fang is somewhere between the scythe and the rapier. So it's still a really good option uh, to bring if you don't use scythe or if you don't want to bring the rapier. Fang is definitely a good coverage for just about everything. And for the crystals, the rapier is better. But again, if you don't really want to bring the rapier, it's not a big deal because fang is only slightly worse at the crystal. So it's definitely a good second choice. And of course, for Ohm, you definitely want to still main hand either a Scythe or a Lance for Ohm. The Fang is probably only good for last hits, just because, as you can see, it is very accurate. So let's say Ohm's like 5, 10 HP, especially on the third phase where it can reset. Well, you probably want to pop that hand with the Fang because it's really nice. So if you bring a Fang as the assist weapon, definitely use that as a last hit because it'll really save you some time or clutch you on some bullshit, you know misses that can cost you the raid or a lot of time fang for the last hit he instantly switched prayers again asshole when i'm not looking I, wow he does it again okay okay see you oh my god stop dude you barely land it even one hit stop you're you're being annoying right now holy shit that was so fast Come on, push it. Oh, that was scary. I'd take 8 that backs in it, to be honest. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, bro. That's how you know you're warmed up now, because I can actually react to all the bullshit. Oh, sweet. You can hit it while it's riding the waves. That's sick. I just hit the gyro around the waves. Super risky, though. I'm not gonna lie. 